about two years ago uh, I did a video on a can crusher that I'd made now this wasn't a serious attempt at making a can crusher it was just a bit of fun I wanted to see how powerful one of those um, low rpm high torque uh, DC motor and gearboxes that you can get for Banggood from for next to nothing just to see how powerful it was and it actually worked obviously it was extremely slow I had it driving a, a screw thread I'll throw up a still shot of the original one that I built if you haven't seen the video then you obviously won't know what I'm talking about so this is the Mark II version. This is a little bit more serious. Now, I was inspired to take another look at my Can Crusher, and I'd, I'd been thinking about it anyway, but then I saw uh, Craig's latest ver video, Craig's Workshop's latest video, where he was uh, having a look around, doing a tour of his friend Bill Baggins' workshop. And one of the things that Bill had built was shown right at the very end of the video, and that was this pneumatic. I'm fairly certain it was an air amp he was using. <laughs> Uh, can crusher which is that absolutely bloody brilliant bit of kit and uh, all, all kudos to bill for building it it's it, absolutely fantastic so i thought right i'm gonna have a an, another go at mine now i can't really have a compressor running in my shop because it's it's too loud basically and obviously my workshop is inside the house so but um i thought oh i don't know what about a one of those electronic electrical rams you know these electrical actuators linear actuators they're called and when i first looked at these a few years ago they were horrendously expensive but they've actually come down in price so i bought one and this is the actual item here let's have a quick closer look at this now this is a 12 volt 200 millimeter stroke 1500 newton electronic actuator it's got built-in limit stops, which is great. So you can't overextend the RAM or over-retract it. And as I said, it runs off 12 volts. So I've basically utilized, as you can probably see, I've utilized some of the parts from my original can crusher. All of this is from the original one, including the, the wooden block there. I've just put it on a slightly longer base to accommodate the RAM, because the RAM is obviously somewhat longer. Right, let's see it crush some cans then. As you can see, it has absolutely no trouble with the old Red Bull can. I've got it set so it, it will stop on its own. That Obviously, I've adjusted this so that it gets to this point and then the, the limit switch cuts out. Um, but yes, it has absolutely no problem with the Red Bull cans. And it's obviously a hell of a lot faster than my original one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just thought you might be interested in have a look at that. Um, I'm sure you could probably get away with a RAM with less power than this one's got, but um, they, they are just not expensive anymore. So I thought, right, I'll go for the 1500 Newton one. At the moment, I've got it running off my uh, battery box, but what I really need to do is give it its own power supply and then have a forward reverse switch in there so that I can, uh, it's all self, it will be self contained then. But uh, anyways, as I said, just a very quick video, just thought you might like to uh, have a look at it um, in action. So the can crusher is now finished and ready to go on the wall. I've added a few uh, little uh, refinements to it since uh, you last saw it. I did find that every now and again, a can would pop out of the slot while it was being crushed. So I've added a Perspex door, which is this there, which um, stops that from happening. And obviously, as this thing is gonna be mounted vertical against the wall, probably more likely to happen in, in that situation. So what else? Oh yeah, um, closing on this part here. I've extended the channel slightly. This just simply allows the RAM to go all the way up to its limit stop at this end um, uh, and still be in line with the main channel. Uh, I just thought that was a useful thing to have. I've added a metal plate to the end of the uh, wooden RAM. Again, this is just to protect the wood because the wood will get dinged up over time. Uh, what else? Around here. There we go. Yeah, so we've got the battery box over here. 11.1 volt LiPo battery power in it. 
more than adequate for this. And I found this lovely old toggle switch on eBay, which is a double pole, double throw center off, which I've wired up as a simple crossover. So it reverses the polarity on, on the RAM. Uh, and that works absolutely fine. We'll see it in action in a minute. And I think really that's about it. Everything else is exactly the same as, uh, as it was before. I did power it from a bench supply to measure the current and a maximum resistance, which is as you get towards this end of crushing the can. The RAM draw, draws about an amp, so that's not much at all. And the LiPo battery I've got will be more than adequate for that. It's only gonna get used like once or twice a day, so it should last for ages. Right, let's see it in action. Well, this is how it will appear when it's mounted on the wall, obviously. I've got a couple of uh, FDG clamps just to stabilize it because obviously it's freestanding. But uh, here we go. I must admit, I do like that switch. <laughs> Yeah, it has absolutely no problem with those Red Bull cans. That's so satisfying. Well, there you go, as you can see. Job done. That about wraps it up for the uh, Mark II can crusher. All I've got to do now is just mount it on the wall and we'll, uh, we'll be good to go. I hope you enjoyed this video on this thing. I've certainly enjoyed building it and I love crushing cans with it. It's great fun. So uh, as always, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.